Hello and welcome to today's webinar, The Future of Making Things in Infrastructure, the 2016 Autodesk new release. This is Ken Drisco and I'm delighted to be your presenter today. The webinar is brought to you by Live Lab Learning, which is a subsidiary of Academic Corp, a wholly owned applied software company created to provide world-class training. Throughout this presentation, I encourage you to interact with us. Have any questions and comments at the bottom right of your screen? We'll be answering the questions at the end of the presentation. This webinar is being recorded. You'll be able to view it online on your YouTube channel. If you haven't already, search Live Lab Learning on Facebook and like our page to receive the latest information and special offers. When you visit our website, livelablearning.com, there's a complete schedule of all the upcoming training. Please take a note of our upcoming events. Again, um, questions and answers will be held until the end. Hello again, my name is Ken Driscoll and I'm a Senior Application Consultant for Applied Software. Today, again, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel or search Live Lab Learning. You can also visit LiveLabLearning.com for utilities and civil infrastructure, product building design and construction. The first look event, the future is here, Come meet it. Come meet Apply Software at one of our two happy hour lo event locations for our first look at the new Autodesk 2016 releases and for innovative industry trends. One will be in Jacksonville, Florida on June the 16th. The other will be in Savannah, Georgia on June the 17th. The topics include the Apply Software difference, Autodesk subscription, the future of making things. So whether it's architect and engineering, um, future technology and design, collaborative um, collaboration in Revit, InfoWorks 360 and vehicle tracking, BIM 360, Blue, um, Panzora, and IT infrastructure, or on the manufacturing side, future of technology and manufacturing, the complete solution, Inventor, Simulation, Vault, HSM, and CAM. Also upcoming events, we mentioned um, the Auto Applied Software Design Expo Happy Hour, which will be June the 10th from 5.30 to 7.30 at the Buena Vista Palace Hotel and Spa in Lake Buena Vista, Florida. Also on June the 24th, the Florida Users Group, which is going to be at the Hilton Cocoa Beach Oceanfront in Co Contact Ed McKenzie at 404-564-1874 for more information or emckenzie at osti.com. Upcoming webinars, a collaboration for Revit and Building Design Suite. That will be June the 9th from 30 to 1.30 in terms of upcoming webinars. Promotions available for qualifying purchases are made from May the 7th all the way to July the 25th. 4th, 2015, you can save up to $1,500 on new licenses with a two or three year maintenance subscription attached. Also save up to $1,500 on 2016 cross grades to suites and up to $400 on network. Also save up to $600 on one, two or three desktop subscriptions for customers with eligible from 2005 to 2015 licenses. So what is InfraWorks? Because we're talking about the future of making things in infra infrastructure. So InfraWorks goes beyond static images and paper drawings by creating more infrastructure project models to present and explain your design. First of all, in 2016, they've improved some of the naming and packaging that you'll run into as you run into suites and along the Autodesk line of products. 
So the first thing, they've come out with a new product name. It's going to be InfoWorks 360 LT. You'll be able to aggregate data, sketch designs, create a storyboard, um, lots of the core functionality of quote unquote InfoWorks 360. Also, if you're on desktop subscription, entitlements will be offered within the three suites, IDS Premium, Ultimate, and BDS Ultimate. So I'm just trying to clarify some of the product offerings that you'll be seeing. On the other hand, InfoWorks 360, you get all core features plus model builder, collaboration, simulation, and more. You also have the ability to add on vertical products such as drainage, bridge, roll, and reference to InfoWorks 360. So we'll take a look at those things as we kind of go through the presentation. So improved installation. So those who have infrastructure um, design suite, ultimate, premium, or building design suite, ultimate. You won't need a serial number. It's going to be one installation. Entitlements really are managed by logins. And basically, you're going to get InfoWorks 360 fully functional for 30 days. After the 30 days, you're going to be in presenter mode, which only gives draw distances, go through terrain, and basically some of the fundamental things of InfoWorks. No vertical products. So InfoWorks 360 in terms of updates, fully supported versions, new functionality. Basically you can go anywhere in the world and grab 2D aerial photography, high quality aerial photos, terrain data, and also the ability to model irregular polygons in terms of the area that you want to select in the model builder. You also can bring in shape files that you want to define in the model builder. So specifically, if you're familiar with InfoWorks, in the past you've been able to draw a rectangle to generate a area. Now you can do a polyline. Also, model organization features, a new interface, export data, and Wavefront or Collada, which is basically SketchUp files or a Wavefront video. Incorporate screencast functionality to kind of give you an idea of how tools if you want to display workflows. And then store models shared in a local drive or on your network drive. Also publish models and streamline web mobile syncs rapidly. You also have the ability in terms of point cloud enhancement, analysis, visualization, a lot of models, Revit interoperability in terms of bringing data in. Not only bringing data in, but object data that's attached to these specific objects that you bring in, as you can see on the right hand side there. And then they have improved data exchange. Now with Civil 3D, you can import and export back and forth between InfoWorks and InfoWorks 360 and Civil 3D, design roads, intersections, coverage areas, bridges, pipe networks, greatly reducing the rework and cost by importing preliminary designs into Civil 3D, as you can see to the right. And then also being able to attach your design, horizontal, vertical, geometry, astro standards, corridor models, pipe networks for drainage and bridge design straight back into Civil 3D and into InfoWorks. And then basically staying up to date throughout your project. Rebuilding the corridor, refreshing the model from the corridor into InfoWorks 360. And we'll take a look at some of those things as we take a look at the product. And then for roadway design, just being able to convert GIS roads that they bring in from the model builder straight into design roads, profile grid improvements with analysis. Also, model interchanges, traffic flows, standard-driven markings, also global standards including left-hand turns for driving. Also with the bridge design, tool tips in reference to comprehensive catalogs for precast girders, concrete and steel, direct control of segments and girder ends, and also bridge quantities that reflect your design changes. 
and also the watershed analysis for the hydrology model. Automatically delineating watersheds, streams, built in analytics to calculate peak flows, regression, and time concentration, analysis driven culvert inlets and pipe design. Then also pavement drainage. Pavement drainage could be critical because drainage objects in InfraWorks and network pipes can go straight into civil 3D. They're quickly being generated to design. And then drainage analysis, we'll look at some of these things in terms of culverts, manholes, pipes, in terms of a report. Okay, so again, the future of making things in InfraWorks. There will be questions at the end that we will hold off for. And now I just want to jump to InfraWorks 360. So the first thing that you're going to recognize is there's clearly a whole new interface in reference to InfraWorks 360. So one of the big things that you'll recognize is, and you can see that I have models that I've kind of generated a little bit of everywhere. So with the model builder, you can go in and generate aerial photography, road maps, and also terrain data anywhere in the world. So not just locally in the United States, but anywhere in the world. So it kind of gives you a preview where I can filter out what's active, what's recently been used in reference to my models. So there is a filter, and I can just go ahead and select show all. But what's critical, you have roadway design, framework, InfraWorks, bridge design, and also drainage design. There's some other previews that you will have access to as you utilize the program. So preview mode, mode. so bridge analysis, um, corridor optimization, land areas grading, traffic simulation, all is coming within InfraWorks. So the first thing in terms of a model builder, just as an example, what I want to be able to do is I can go in anywhere in the world and type in a location. This location, in reference to what I want to create, it's going to be in Ashland, Virginia. So pretty straightforward. I'm 41 square kilometers. I can go up to 200 square kilometers. I could use a polyline. I can use a shape file. I can use a rectangular area. I can also use base data from roads, buildings, satellite imagery, and also terrain data. So I'm just going to call this model Ashland 2, just to kind of give you an idea. And typically, it takes about 10 or minutes or so to create a quick model. So again, whole new user interface. You can open existing models. You can create a new model. You can also create anywhere in the world globally. A So all I've done is basically created this model we're going to open up this model real quick. So the first thing is, if I click on here, I got a couple items here that I want to take out. So something real quick, and I'm going to hover above those, pick that out there. So one of the quick things is we have this interface, and all I've done is, again, went from 2D, a 2D aerial, to a 3D model. So something pretty straightforward. And if I pick on it, I can always delete. I can start a model from scratch by starting with a map. So something plain and simple. And what you can see here is I've kind of pulled in where I would delineate specific watershed. So I can pull in data automatically that would generate this information. So the first thing that we want to take a look at, if I select my little eye for my model button, I want to be able to display the different data sources that you can bring in. So under the different data sources, clearly we talked about GNU interoperability and working with different file formats. So the first thing is you can bring in a 3D model. You can bring in a civil 3D drawing, an IMX, a Revit model, 
IFC model, a DGN model from MicroStation, a regular AutoCAD 3D model, a point cloud, LAN XML, raster, shape, SQLite, and a SketchUp file. So new functionality in reference to working with different file formats. So as I kind of move along here, I'm just going to delete that. Control that here. Something real quick, right on top of each other. So the first thing that we're going to take a look at is we've got some role data that's came in. We have some buildings that have come in in reference to our model. Okay. So I do have the ability to jump back and forth in reference to our model. And let me just move this out of the way here. So I'm going to close that for screen space. And then I'm just going to jump right back. So I do have the ability to jump back and forth in reference to InfoWorks. So let me just check really quick and see if our Ashland right here, here's my Ashland model. So something really quick and simple didn't take maybe five minutes to create this little model. And I will show you the data and content that has been brought in. So again, road, road wax, terrain data, 10, 50 foot grids, and then also aerial mapping. So it's just creating a really quick model. It's bringing up my imagery. It's going to bring in road data from maps. It's going to bring in aerial from Bing maps. And we're going to take a look at what our model looks like. The second thing that we talked about is this ideal of vertical platforms in reference to drainage, bridge, and road design. So we'll take a look at that. So the model, and then we'll also take a look at simulation. Again, the vertical applications would be the drainage module, the bridge module, and then the road design. So again, to kind of clarify what those things are, and this takes a couple more minutes, we do want to keep in mind road design, bridge modeler, and drainage. So once your 30 days is up, all you will see with your InfoWorks, if you haven't had the rights for InfoWorks 360, is you will see just this I for present presenter mode. Okay? So it's something to keep in mind. It's going to allow you to explore and present models created and shared by others with InfoWorks 360. But once the 30-day trial is over, then you'll only be in presenter mode after that point. Okay, so again, fully supported, global content, high quality, quality terrain with my aerial. So as you can see, it's bringing in my aerial. I do have the ability to create different shapes and also bring in shape files. So here we have something really plain and simple. We brought in the aerial and the same thing. I'll just bring in my quick and I can move around and clearly you can see there's some terrain that has been brought in from the site. And if I zoom in, high resolution in terms of my aerial. So pretty straightforward. We go straight from a 2D to a 3D with terrain data and also aerial photography. Okay, so something pretty simple. If we move along here, what I want to be able to do is in this area, I just want to create something quick in a proposal to come here. So if I pick on one of these roads here, we can just delete that out. It's clearly not a road going through that building, but I just want to an existing road from this road all the way to here through this site. So on my design road module, I can lay out a quick design. So on the local roads, something plain and simple, I'm just going to do green space with sidewalks. The first thing that I'm going to do, if I hit escape here, the first thing I'm going to do is the road data that comes in from the aerial it's just a GIS role. I can convert that to a design role. So now that I have converted that to a design role, clearly you can see it's giving me a length of that design role 
an elevation range and a grade range based upon the topo for that design road. I'm going to pick here and create a design road also. So I'm just going to convert it to a design road. So something pretty straightforward. And if I look, I can look at lanes going forward, backwards, can do road side grading if I wanted to. So I'm just going to quickly draw in just this sidewalk and green space. I have multiple choices in terms of what I can choose to lay out in reference to my reference to my road. So I'm just going to do a street with sidewalks. So I'm just going to pick this point here. I'm just going to zoom in, pick this point, no big deal. Pick this point here, just zoom out, come over here. And I'm going to pick this point. And now you will notice it puts a, and if I tell it 20 miles an hour, then that curve rate radius is going to change. Because all of this information from my design road is based upon ASHTO standards. So I can pick right in here and just come up to my other design road over here. And I'll zoom in something pretty simple and straightforward. I'll just double pick. And from that design road, it gives me an intersection automatically from that design road. So really quick, elevation range based upon length, elevation, and grade for my road. So if I just pick this point, it's just a design road, something straight and simple. If I zoom out a little bit, one of the things that we want to be able to do, and you can see over here, if I just move this over just a little bit, Let me zoom in. Yeah. So one of the things I want to be able to do real quickly is you can see that elevation won't go straight in there. So if I had a PVI, I can lengthen my curve radius. I can move my PVI. I can move it vertically. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. I'm going to pick my PVI. I can move that vertically. And you can see how it grades accordingly. And then if I pick on my road again here and just move this down. And the nice thing about my design road elevations at any point in time. So if I pick on my design road again, I can pick just my profile. So I'm going to do a quick profile view of this design road. So again, everything that I'm doing in reference to my road, I can send straight to Civil 3D, which is the critical part. So clearly, here's my design road. Here's my PVI. So let me just zoom out a little bit. So you can get the grunt of what I'm trying to show. So if I move that, here's my PVI over here to the left. I can move it. It changes my grades. I can also put in tabularly grades and distances and slopes. So we'll just move that up a little bit. Just keep that out of the ground. And then I'll pan over a little bit here. And you can see down here it tells me where I'm at in reference to my grade here. So I can tie right into there. And then I'll come over here. And again, here's my design role. But also, we have a bridge model. So the bridge module, if I pick on my design role and right click, I can add a bridge. So something as simple as adding a bridge. And again, we're talking clearly just concepts. So I can pick this point here. And drag it all the way to this point here. And I can say, OK, something in reference to just a median, um, median with a simple barrier, median with curved rail. I can add in any type of bridge that I want in reference to my bridge style. So I'm just going to. So clearly, you can see here, I've created a bridge. It's a precast bridge. It's got parameters. 
a reference to my length, deck, piers. So this bridge is not just a AutoCAD object. So we, we're, we're continually thinking CAD, but now we're talking about modeling information. So you can see piers. You can see my actual bridge. If I pick on it, right click, I can toggle the deck to see my girders. I can pick on the actual bridge girder group, and I can go in and change independently my girder, interior, exterior, if I wanted to. If I right click, I'll toggle that back off. I'll pick on the bridge again. I'll right click and pick it again. And then I can right click and I can pull out quantities. So all this information is being generated automatically in reference to my bridge and my bridge deck. So it's something pretty straightforward and simple. If I wanted to, just to get an idea, I can pick on that PVI and let's just raise this up a little bit to kind of see the effect of the dynamic engineering and updating. So again, quick bridge concepts, reference to working with the bridge modeler, model, also the design roads. So if I pick on that and drag that back down, no big deal. So that's up a little bit and that's down so we clearly can see that. So we'll move this just up a little bit. And then I'll come in here and I just want to change the style. So again, if I pick on my bridge deck, I can right click, toggle transparencies. I can do individual orders and I can come in here and select the type of girder. So if I scroll down, I can go to American Box Grower. If we come back, um, American Bulb T right here. If I pick on that, and if I zoom in, now you can see that these are two different girders. Also can run girder analysis. So a lot of functionality in reference to my bridge modeler. So I'll just exit right out of that. And then select edit, pick on that, hit escape, and I'm right back where I started. So a lot of functionality runs in terms of a bridge. Now clearly a bridge engineer is going to take a lot more time, but we're just quickly talking about a quick concept. So one of the other things that we want to take a look at is this idea of the different styles that we can work with in reference to InfoWorks 360. So we do have a style palette where if I went on my roads I can just pick a road with the boulevard if I picked on that and just drag that right over I can just do a quick roll with a boulevard so something as simple as that and if I picked on it I still have my PBI here and I can raise that up a little bit and you will see my roadside grading that just comes straight across so we do have the ability to go back and forth in terms of what we want to do in reference to our if I wanted to do something like simple as a design divided highway just drag and drop I have a divided highway something as simple as that if I wanted to just a sidewalk just pick on the sidewalk just drag and drop so easy simple dynamic updating a reference to my design role. Okay, so if I picked on that now, we still have our bridge, so we're going to go ahead and pick on that, and then we're just going to delete it out. And here's my bridge. Pick on that. So something as simple as that. come in and something that's simple okay so we just have a road here now so I just kind of took my bridge out because one of the things I want to be able to do um, in terms of showing information um, I just want to be able to kind of work with the three different modules and then we'll take a look at some of this other functionality so if I pick on my something quick and simple I mean 
imagine just going in here and saying, well, you know, I want to see what this site looks like if I drive through it. So I'm going to select create a design rope. If I pick on it, it automatically generates a quick storyboard for me. So imagine just being able to drive through a site. So again, InfoWorks gets you to this 3D conceptual, 3D visualization in terms of what the site will look like just as you create a simple design role in driving through the site. So simple as simple as that. Um, doesn't take much time. I just have a quick design road here. We'll just stop that. And I can make that storyboard and walk through and drive through as simple as I want it. I can make it as complex if I want it to zoom up and out. But what I want to be able to do, and I'm going to come here, I'm just going to pick on it and go to my drainage module. So the whole idea behind the drainage module is I want to be able to generate and analyze a watershed. So if I select create watershed, I'm going to select OK. I can go in and change my grid spacing for my analysis. So I'm going to change that to 10. So pretty safe in terms of my grid analysis. And then I can go in, click, if I pick on it. I can go in and start it wherever I want in reference to where I may want to call her. I, mean, I want to think about my drainage for my pavement. But if I hit enter, it's going to examine the whole road for me. So as I examine that, it's going to create a watershed analysis for me. So the beauty of working with this, I have created some quick terrain data. I've created a design road. I've showed you in reference to a design bridge. I can run analysis on that bridge. Now I'm taking a look at watershed. So quickly generating these kind of models. So it says um, my analysis was completed. Now the black lines that you see are going to be streams. And then the blue lines are going to be the drainage areas. So if I just pick on one, you can see that my watershed over here, I have the channel slope, it has elevations, it has peak flows. So if I right click and select edit, now I have the ability to put in my hydrology method, which in have rational and regression. So I'm just going to try put in rational. Then my runoff coefficient for drainage, I'm going to put in 0.45. And then my rainfall intensity, I'm going to put in 3.5. And if you wanted to, you can go in and determine and tell it what area of the country you may be in based upon states. So I'm going to hit enter. And right there, it tells me my Q100. So now that I have that, I can pick back up on my roll, right click, and hit escape. So I've created my watershed. And then if I pick up on my road, I can say add culverts. So if I zoom in, just really quick, again, dynamically generating this information on the fly. So if I zoom in a little bit, you can see that it's put my culverts in. So I'll just zoom in. So if I pick on one of those, it's going to give me my culvert. So I do have the ability to go in and change this in terms of what I want to use and the analysis in terms of my culvert. So if I right click, I can analyze that culvert. And that analyze is based upon Manny's coefficient and that time of concentration and the regression analysis that I use for my watershed. So as you can see, I'm just going to zoom out a little bit. So you can see the culvert. If I move this over just a little bit, you can see the culvert up here downstream. Downstream, my outlock control 
uh, my upstream. So if I wanted to, I can go in and I say, you know, I'm going to change this to two barrels. So I'll change it to two barrels. And now you can see, here's my outlet structure, and it's still showing uh, my head water at distance. So it's based upon two barrels now. So dynamically updating data, and as you can see, if I zoom in, now I have two barrels. And I can move that up and down. So here's my head wall distance, height. So if I move that down, everything dynamically updating. If I zoom in, here's my outlet constro um, control, head wall height. We'll just move that up again. And then here's my flare angle. I can change the flare angle. So some really unique functionality in reference to hydrology parameters. So move that. And then I can go in and if I pick on my road, I can right click on my road and select add painted pavement drainage. So I can go in and say, okay, well, specifically, what kind of structure do I want to use? So again, what we want to keep in mind is we're doing some really quick concept drainage analysis in reference to InfoWork. And I'll just hit enter to run that pavement drainage. And then if I zoom in, you will see that it's created inlets and structures for me. And if I go underneath, you can see my structures. Okay, so there's my caller. And let's just come down to this intersection. And I can pick on a few of these. And I'm going to delete that. I'll pick on that, delete that. Something simple. And we'll come underneath. And you can see, let's move this over, that we no longer have, have a structure here. So we'll pick on that and we'll delete that. Something pretty plain and simple. So we can pick on that structure right there. Let me hit escape. We can pick on that structure. And yeah, let me move this over just a little bit. Where did that pipe go? Okay. So there's our culvert down there. There's our culvert down there. Here's our structure. And the beauty of working with this is, again, everything can be pushed straight to Civil 3D. Base. If I pick on my inlet, it's showing it's a rec rectangular inlet. If I right click, and I select edit, and it's going to show me my inlet. And I can move these around if I wanted to, and it's going to redesign automatically. And I'll just zoom out a little bit. And if I pick on that, it shows me it's rectangular. I can go in and change whatever type of inlet that I want. We'll do concentric structure. So we can change the actual inlet. And if I pick on the inlet, right click, I can run analysis for my inlets also. So here it's showing me my um, tributary spread, area, runoff coefficient, design flows. All that information dynamically updating and can be put in based upon quick concepts. Other things that we want to consider is we pick on our intersection. Now we can go in and change our radiuses in reference to our intersection based upon the vehicle that's driving through that intersection. So dynamically updating. 
back and forth, dynamically updating. Again, ability to share these models, view and publish these models, streamline these models. Again, a lot of functionality in reference to, and there's my watershed. So just able to utilize. So also, I'm going to change this design role. So if I pick on it, right click and go into properties. Here. And we're going to change the style for my design role. So I'm just going to come back in here, pick on it, and go to my styles palette. And I have different roles. You clearly can see there's railway, bridge also. Under my road, I have specific roads, one with the boulevard. Um, divided highway sidewalks, sidewalks with lamps, and if I select interstate, we have an interstate bridge rectangular with barrier, also two-lane two bridge, and also general and standard. So we can also do with the median. So bridges, medians, ramps, two lanes, three legs with the left hand turn. So we'll just put that on. A so now if we come in and pick and right click and edit, we still have the ability to change all our parameters and what we want to edit in terms of our turn lane. So individually I can go in and add widening back and forth. So I can add widening. So let's say 20. So again, dynamically updating. And then we also have different facades, different materials. So I'm just going to zoom in here. If I pick on it, I'm just going to delete that out. No big deal. Pick on that. We'll delete that watershed out. So there's a couple in terms of specific areas. And we'll pick that one and we'll delete that one out. So something pretty straightforward. Now, let's just take into consideration, um, I just want to draw in, which is also new, some land areas. So we have a couple different things in the past. What we've been able to do is we've been able to draw in a coverage area that would generate grass and a border. So we'll just pick right here, something simple kind of generate an area here and here. Not just double pick. Something pretty strange and simple. So if I picked on that area, I've just generated a coverage area. I have the ability to shape this so you can see the yellow and the blue. And if I move the elevation up, it kind of shows the different colors. You have that ability to utilize that. And you can see it's kind of graded over here. But what's new now in InfoWorks 360 is this ability to create land areas. So if I pick this land area, I'm going to do something just pretty straightforward. Pick here and just come down to this area. And here, here, and we'll move it up to this point. And go here, and they'll do something simple as that. We'll pick on that area. So now there, that's a land area. The other one was a coverage area. This is a land area. So there's a couple differences that I want to kind of take a look at. So if I come in, and I come and I scroll down, we have grading now in InfoWorks 360. So right now, I can just drag and drop this on my land area, and it's going to update this model pretty pretty close. So you can see now around this model, it's doing three to one for my cut and feel. If I pick on it, right click, I can add vertexes. I can also raise this up. So once I raise that up, it dynamically updates. So let's just imagine this is a building pad that we're using now and we wanted to do three to one. So if I wanted to put some stone in here, from three to one, and if we can just kind of look at this here, just to kind of 
and grading in different areas all the way around. So maybe I want to come in and I want to add in some stone opposed to just grass now. If I go three to one, so now I've added and then some stone. So the beauty of working with this now, if I came in here with this rock wall, I can come in and edit this. And here you can see it's from three to one slopes. You can create your own slopes in reference to your grading. So you can see cut and fill materials use the same style. Set limits 50 feet. If I select OK, dynamically updating. And again, we want to keep in mind what we want to be able to do and what do we really get from this. So here, if I came in here on my Analyze tab, if I pick this eye and then we go into Settings and Tools or we go into Create um, Design Presentations, <clears throat> if I select that, it's going to give me <clears throat> options in reference to rendering, watermarks, sun and sky. So just something real simple before we get to more of this grading, sun and sky. And again, it's just to create a simple presentation for maybe stakeholders or those who really don't grasp the ideal of a set of 2D plans. So also, I want to be able to bring in a model. So I'm going to do something really quick here. Just going to double pick and we'll look at Infowords. Mm -hmm. And we'll come back here. So something really quick and simple. Let's see a quick model that I want to grab here. So something simple <clears throat> in terms of the model. So we'll go here, we'll go here, and we'll say some quick models. Um, say building models. We got uh, GIS, Esri files. We do have also let's see building models. Got some surface data. Okay. So all I really wanted to do is bring in a actual building model. So let's go back here. And I'll grab a quick model. Let's see where we're at here. So we have some micro station files, and some mono files. We also have. Okay. Maybe I threw away that model. Okay, so again, we do have the ability in InfoWorks. So I'm just going to do something as simple as a building, something really quick. I had a building here. I'm going to come here. Yeah, I'll come over here. And here's my lot. Come right here, come right down here, put that over here, put a quick model right there, and we'll create a quick building. So something simple and quick. I hit escape, pick on that, raise that up a little bit. So a quick building in terms of our model with a lot. We're doing some grading. Even if I wanted to, I can come in and do 10 meter. Let me just pick and drag on there for something real simple. So now it's 10 meter grading. So a lot of fun flexibility in terms of the functionality that you can create. And then we'll do something really simple again. We'll go in. 
and we'll create our storyboard and now we'll see what that looks like so again in the context of what the site really looks like if we have a building if we have a parking lot what the golf course look like how this role impacts our project in the site again I have a few things there that's kind of showing you know where our culverts are located showing our pavement showing our structures in the road so a lot of functionality and reference to this ideal and concept in terms of what InfoWorks brings to the table as a solution for those who want to do really quick concepts so drainage bridge design roads point cloud data intersections pipe networks horizontal vertical roadway design quarter models bridge design data back and forth so just real quick I'm just gonna open up civil 3d to kind of show you what you would get in terms of working with civil 3d and infoworks because clearly you can push out data to infoworks you also have the ability to push data from a project between InfoWorks and Civil 3D. So on the Insert tab, you have InfoWorks 360 where I can open up an InfoWorks model. So as an example, I'm going to select Open Up an InfoWorks model, and it's basically prompting me where the model is located. So if I pick on it, it's going to show me under C users. Let me go back. One. We clearly see that there's some InfoWorks models. Let me just check something real quick. We'll cancel that. We'll jump right back to InfoWorks. And under settings and tools, I'll just check my model properties for something really quick. And that model from InfoWorks, you can see it's Ashland 2. It's a database that's grabbed my longitude and latitude. It's also using AASHTO standards for my design role. Under application options, it's in C users capable. All of this. So if I came back and went to C users, Hydroscope app data, local, Autodesk, we can go in and find those models for Infoworks 360. So pretty straightforward. Here's the Autodesk 360 loggers users. Um, so that model you can bring back and forth in reference to InfoWorks. You can see where you can push data out also from InfoWorks in reference to its settings. So pushing data back and forth and at some point if you want more detail in terms of back and forth with InfoWorks and Civil 3D um, also shoot me an email. We can go through those things also. But being able to push data from Civil 3D. And then if I came to my design for roads, you can see here if I select generate Civil 3D, the same thing for planned productions within Civil 3D. So being able to push data right back out. Okay, so also again, roadway design updates. We have converting GIS, profile grade elements, cut and field geometry. So with Civil 3D, same thing. I'm um, accelerating that concept design into Civil 3D and back and forth. Interchange standards driven markings 
global standards, including left-hand turns and reference to intersections, tooltips and canvas for bridge, precast, concrete girders, um, direct control of girder segments and girder ends, also bridge quantities. We'll close this, so we'll 3D. And then analytics to calculate peak flows, rational uh, regression method, and also a user defined in reference to watershed delineation, pipe design, culvert design, and also inlet design. So if we jump back here, Again, automatic delineation for watershed, built-in analytics, analysis driven, rapid network modeling for pavement drainage, piping outfalls, access to extended libraries, also reports to be able to generate drainage analysis. So again, the future of making things in infrastructure, you know, the Life cycle of a project requires more than just a few picks and clicks from software. More often than not, it's a collaboration of bringing these things together when we start from concept all the way to construction. So, questions, I'll address questions now. So, Brianna, is there, are there any questions? Ken? Take a moment here. Hi, Ken. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, at this time, it does not yes. look like there are any questions. Um, so we'll just hold on another minute or so and see if any questions do come in. Okay. So I can see we still have a few people still on. All right, uh, there is nothing that has come through. So we can go ahead and wrap it up. Okay, wonderful. So um, I want to thank everyone again for attending this Live Lab Learning and Web Seminar in reference to the future of making things in infrastructure. And if there's no more questions, I guess we can end it from there, Brianna.